Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Reich in which we're playing as everyone's favorite German Empire, sometimes the German Empire, but we're playing with the Kaiser Reich 1.0, the Empire Strikes Back update which gives the German Empire a reworked focus tree, but we're going to talk about the aftermath of an assassination. The shots firing on the streets of Moscow yesterday marked the first unexpected event this year and struck Germany directly as in their aftermath. The German ambassador to Moscow, Friedrich Werner von der Schulenberg, received an invitation from the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs to negotiate on the future of Russo-German relations. The upcoming expiry of the Vilnius Agreement and the fate of large German investments in Russia were the main topics of discussion, however. The contents of the Russian note were leaked to the press by a clerk in the embassy and instantly embellished with second-hand rumors and fear-mongering about planned nationalizations of German investments or possibly even a road to war. The stocks. Are companies with large investments in Russia, especially heavy industry giants such as Krupp AG and Rheinmetall, began to tremble in the aftermath and what so far has been a steady stock spike has turned to a volatile market. Inven interventions by key stock market brokers and bankers such as the Association of Berlin Banks and Bankers prevented a stock market crash, but the faith of the investors has taken a sharp dive. In the midst of this flurry of economic news, few are asking the question of what could await Eastern Europe in the future. For two decades, Russia has been seen as an unstable Eastern buffer whose great power ambitions have been permanently shattered, but perhaps it was not as permanent as people thought. How could Russia be a threat to Germany again? But we've got masters of the world. The Valkyrie and the British Revolution made one known fact. We have risen to the peak of our power and influence, and it is lonely at the top. We, the masters of the world, have earned the place in the sun we deserve, and our duty is to defend it. Enemies far and wide seek to topple the German eagle, so we must always strike back. We can get to Ostwald. Cool. Buying time with spies. Does that give us an, intel an intelligence network or not? Um, demand renewal of the Treaty of Metz. If they accept, world attention goes down. If they decline, we get war support. Ooh, and they lose war support. Second expedition to China. Ooh, that's cool. Expand colonial budgets. Um, the private plan. I want to do this one first. Ambassador of the, German, uh, Ambassador of the United States, Friedrich Wilhelm von Prittwitz, and Gaffron has noted the deplorable economic and social situation in America and has predicted that vast conflict may soon break out across the Union soon, if nothing is done to stop it for that. He's drafted a plan for an interest-free loan to the U.S. which will help aid their economic recovery and curtail social growth. Well, since we're here, we might as well do that next. I don't mind expanding the colonial budget, too. Reichstagweil, uh, Val, 1936, one after another, moderate chances of perpetuating uh, the consensus of the March Constitution of Rule of the Kaiserreich since 1920. Solf, Edsgub, uh, Erzberger, Wolsadowski, Brachdorf, Frantau, Marx, Bernstorff, that does not mean that there's been no opposition in this consensus, however. Permanent opposition. Two parties which, in spite of the popularity, have been eyed out. Eyed with suspicion by the Kaiser and the political establishment, they wait the end of the consensus with glee. The election of 1936 may prove to be what they had waited for so long, a path to power. On the left, the Social Democrats have been one of the main champions of the March reforms and took it, and took it as victory, yet grew increasingly estranged with their allies on the Senate during the 1920s. The dream of an SPD Chancellor never came about to the Kaiser's reluctance, and the end of Brockdorf's grand coalition saw the SPD finally move to the opposition. A plurality in the Reichstag is a priority, but so is dealing with the worrying growth of the right. And the Conservatives take advantage of the fall of the German coalition, or the March coalition. The democratic rights which the German people finally gained in 1920 may fall under threat. The German Fatherland Party is a party of new breed of the right. Now the agrarian aristocracy of the DKP, of the petty one no, politics of the pre-war anti-Semitan Partei, but a party of the radical middle class, the yellow workers and the nationalist masses, officially established in 1919, <clears throat> but born in 1917 as an all-national organization campaigning for wartime unity due to its connection to the Tirpitz Circle. The OHL, a dictatorship, and secret plots to overthrow the Kaiser during the war, its eyed with suspicion by everyone, be it Wilhelm II or other parties, but times have changed and disappointment with the March Coalition could be easily benefit the DVLP, not powerful enough to achieve a majority in itself, uh, but it'll need to build a grand coalition of the right, which means comp compromising with their national revolutionary principles, but step forward is better than no step at all, right? Schutz euer demokratischen Volksrecht, Welt SPD, you play as SPD and receive appropriate events. It appears unlikely that will be on, well, you will be able to gather a majority outright, but remember the action is just beginning. Deutschland wach auf, deine Schicksalstunde ist gekommen. Welt DVLP. See the appropriate events. Oh, they all, you know what? I'm going to go with SPD. Let's go Social Democrat for this campaign and see what it's like. I don't know. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. Social Democratische Partei Deutschlands. <clears throat> and then we'll do expand colonial budget because I do want to help our guys out. Our colonies in Africa and Asia fall into hard times, struggling with colonial resistance and being unprepared for outside threats. Our surge of funding for the Economic Defense Secretari Secretariats will leave them more pre than prepared for the years ahead. 
Good job, Colonel Love. Very good. Ah, so what do we have here? Reichstag elections of 1936. Oh, God. Elections of the Reichstag of the German Empire scheduled on the 10th or of April. 1936, a tumultuous term finishing even even with more tumultuous final four months. Centrifugal forces uh, from left and right threaten to rip apart the political consensus established in the empire ever since the end of the Weltkrieg, and few know who will come out on top of its, uh, in its place. The Reichstag is elected in the first past post constituencies with universal, equal, and secret vote. The March reforms in 1930 or 1920. Adjusting the electoral system somewhat, establishing additional constituencies and creating multi member constituencies in major German cities, turning the system even more heterogeneous and bringing the member seats to 445. Events taking place during the election period will be able to strengthen or weaken one of the competing parties. 223 are required for majority. The project results are as follows. Interesting. Consolidate the Saxon stronghold. The Kingdom of Saxony, heavily industrialized, has been a major stronghold for the old Social Democrats ever since the 1980s. The miners and industrial workers of the Red Saxony consistently carry majorities for local SPD candidates, and the Saxon SPD has long been since integrated into the government of the Kingdom. Uh, though additional support, we can consolidate the stranglehold, sweeping up a few swing constituencies in Saxony and the surrounding area. Socialist popular front in rural industrial districts. There is a hot bit of not just for the SPD, but also for the left, far left here. Due to poor working conditions, more radical local socialist governments, and influence from across the French border, KPD and KAPD, uh, field candidates capable of winning worker-dominated constituencies, however. The bourgeoisie and far right might be able to exploit a division and minimize their gains. Perhaps we can offer selective cooperation with the far left and establish popular fronts in worker-dominated districts to allow both parties to grow. Stand joint candidates with the left LVP. The Liberal People's Party once held grand illusions of becoming a dominant force of the center, but even the reunification of the Liberals failed to accomplish this. What did that bring him? Back to us. The Progressive People's Party was once our partner, and now the successor can continue the same role, building joint candidates with us. All Democratic state co candidates in rural Prussia. The conservative constituencies in rural Prussia have traditionally been dominated by the national stride, but it does not mean that they are invulnerable. To a niche uh, of poor peasantry, a narrow class of industrial workers and liberal bourgeoisie and Poles who could potentially pose a challenge if they work together, which are proposed fielding candidates under unified socialist, liberal, Catholic, and moderate stance, and try to steal as many rural Prussian constituencies as possible. And then selective Zentrum cooperation. One of our two great competitors, Zentrum, may be a threat to our potential ally, depending on the composition of the next Reichstag. As such, we should not concern ourselves with joint cooperation with Zentrum, however, we can endorse some left-wing Catholic candidates in constituencies where we have little chance of victory and thus have a bit of a positive relationship. Well, we're going to consolidate the Saxon stronghold. Oh, we can do all of these, huh? You're allowed to take three total decisions. LVP and SBD in one. You know, I'll do this one. In rural Prussia, probably doesn't make any sense. I don't want the far left. Because we'll be fighting the far left later on. So, foreign policy. A good foreign policy is what vital to the survival of the nation, no matter its size. While some nations prefer to focus on building alliances, other more aggressive powers opt to challenge their opponents head-on in open conflict. Whatever we choose, we must not uh, be foolhardy, for only through tactful foreign policy can we build friendships and destroy enemies. Or to summit for peace. If we believe the next uh, great European war is too near, while well, we aren't yet prepared, we can host summit up with ambassadors from host states to uh, ease tension somewhat. The ten years after the intervention for the past month. Uh, the Berlin Stock Exchange has been in a volatile plateau, and some voices such as Walter von Rattenau have already predicted an impending stock market crash, though others are skeptical of such a doom saying. Still, a sense of unease permeates the markets, and trading volumes are relatively unsubdued. Or subdued. Until now, when one or two punch dealt with a second severe blow to the stability of the stock market, I had a forced audience by the Reichswirtschaftsamt. Uh, in the economic office, numerous instances of fraud have been revealed among companies operating in Germany's Asia. The deplorable finances of their eastern branches were being hidden by fudging numbers, and the same fudging was used to avoid taxes. Just in time when a retired official from Germany's Asia, Franz Brunninghaus, publishing a piece in the Berliner Tagenga Blatt, said on ten years after the intervention, referred to a German intervention in China with an expeditionary force to topple the Kuomintang's northern expedition. An alarmist piece, describing the failure of German foreign policy in East Asia, and saying that the instability in the illegal eight provinces as the fuse which was set off an explosion of socialist and anti-concessionist revolts in China, threatening all German investments in China. For a market whose stability is already wobbling, this is not good news to wake up to as investors. Uh, began pulling out affected companies in droves, causing a dip in overall stock price. A uh, flurry in trading on German government bonds occurred as exposed investors needed liquidity sold to them to other less exposed institutions seeking stabler investments. If this continues, it could lead to the greatest stock market crash in German history, but what, it, what if it could be stopped, you know? Uh, so we also have Ostpolitik here too. Oh, we can also assume full control of the Middle African Navy. 
Small German and Middle African navies, a valuable asset to our naval strategy in the Indian Ocean. We'd be better off over more closely integrated in the Berlin's command structure rather than being left to the whims of Dar es Salaam. An empire in the east spans from the Baltic to the Black Sea. The Oststadt are a pragmatic mix of de facto client states held in the line by half our strength, half of the fear of Russia. We constantly need to monitor the political developments and react when necessary. Poland may be one of the most loyal subjects for now, but there's no guarantee that this will remain the case. We must carefully consider our investment in Poland to guarantee their loyalty and economic cooperation. Predicted election outcome for August 4th supporters, slim majority. Investments in Poland. Increasing our economic control over Poland will solidify our grip over them. Ensure that their future uh, foreign policy will serve our in business interests well. We can sell Polish holding. Some of our business ventures in Poland have not been as useful as we hoped them to be, luckily. The split of Austrian, Czech, and Polish businessmen to take him from us in exchange for cash. The Polish pro-monarchist campaign in August the 4th has never been in the most popular king, but it's nothing a little bit of German PR can't work to fix that. And passing the Reichstag and the Frankfurter Zeitung, Walter von Rathenau, has repeated his call for action demanding the government to impose a week-long temporary bank holiday from Monday, February 3rd onwards, which would take the heat off and overheat <coughs> Heat a market and allow tensions in the air to cease. Needs this proposal reached to President of the Reichsbank, Halsmar Schock, who forwarded the proposal to Chancellor Herbert von Duxen. The two politicians thus spent the weekend trying to organize an emergency response to an impending economic collapse. A meeting of the leaders of the Reichstag parties on Saturday was fruitless, however, though the parliamentary leaders all agreed that the situation was very tense. They disagreed on the specifics. And ultimately, the two largest opposition leaders, Hermann Müller of the SPD and Ulrich von Hassel of the DVLP, were anticipating an economic downfall as blame for it would fall upon not them, but upon the LVP Zentrum and the Chancellor in the end. Stating that getting a few plutocrats bankrupt might just leave Germany better off, Müller accused the March coalition of creating those conditions for the crash in the first place and ending the meeting. Desperate and disarmed by the political impasse, Schock chose to act independently on Sunday. The Reichsbanks published a note declaring that access to credit within the Reichsbank will henceforth be based on their primary coverage ratio, and temporarily suspended the Reichsmark's convertibility to gold. His goal was to bring down long-term stability of the market by minimizing damage due to the banks in a stock market crash put on the last day before the market, its own tariff in the market, and <coughs> neutered the role of the Reichsbank as a lender of last resort. Let's hope Monday brings good news. Oh boy. Are we training our guys? Yeah, we are. We actually have enough fuel. Look at that. Go, Afghanistan, go! Oh! <clears throat> On the 3rd of February, 1936, the Berlin stock market uh, uh, stopped sinking. It plunged. Fueled by the instability of the markets, panic selling erupted as soon as the stock market opened on Monday morning. It took longer than the night for the teleprinters to stop sputtering out the results of what became known as Black Monday. When it was also been analyzed, it was clear the situation had only gotten worse. The shock of this unprecedented economic catastrophe will no doubt be felt all over the entire world. The German Golden Age has ended for now, at least. Mein Gott! Well, look at that. Who needs stability? And we do have a cup of ginseng tea here, too, to keep us nice and warm. I'm not touching that. God, no. The death of Wilhelm Solf, amidst the chaos of the recent stock market crash, the death of former Rex Chancellor Wilhelm Solf, has been taken notice barely of by the most of the German people. So has succumbed to his bad case of pneumonia this morning at age of 73, and leaves beyond an enormous political legacy. Barely anyone else had such a lasting influence on domestic, foreign, and especially colonial affairs in the time between 1911 and 1923. It was Solf who continued what Bernard Dunberg started in the newly created colonial office in the mid-1900s, and transformed the German colonial empire into one of the most modern on Earth. It was Sofa fought against annexation as hardliners during the war and advocated for a fair but honorable peace treaty of compromise. It was Sofa who led the first parliamentary, democratically elected government after the end of the war, and it was Sofa who tried to put an end to the decades of Anglo German hostilities with his famous Rosen mission. In 1921, albeit sadly without success. Even after his resignation in 1922, Sofa remained active in democratic liberal circles and shaped a whole generation of reformist minded colonial officials, many of whom so far reaching influence in the colonies like Herman and Sabbath in the East. Despite all this, his fairly progressive views made him a powerful enemies of the conservative minded imperial political elite, especially the reaction of colonial secretary. But on the, this sad day, even his old adversaries preferred to remain silent and pay tribute to one of the most influential statesmen in recent German history, a great example to every subject of the empire, the Federalist bloc. Finding themselves under increasingly greater competition, Zentrum branches in competitive regions such as Silistia, Westphalia, and Hanover, and being struggled to maintain the ground against popular social democratic and right wing candidates. And to alleviate the disparity, <coughs> Zentrum candidates and party branches have even begun independently making deals with local parties unite behind a common candidate in competitive districts and thus increase their chances of victory. And Hanover, Zentrum, has renewed its historic cooperation with the German Hanoverian Party, commonly known as the Gulf Party. Uh, a, a regional uh, political party created out of the annexation of the Kingdom of Hanover. It generally sat with Zentrum in the pre war Reichstag, however. The post war years have seen experiences to sharp decline. The Gulf conservative federalism has struggled in the post war environment, and losing their last uh, lease on life might just prove to be the end of the party on the other side of the empire. Zentrum members of Poland began expanding the collaboration with the Polish autonomists, particularly those closer to the CHZJM and Polar on Proper Polar. <coughs> Poland proper. 
Unlike in Hanover, the Polish ethnic constituency has not less responsibility, although it still needs to be compete with the anti-Polish electoral pact in mixed constituencies. For them, much like the Belfin, Zentrum is a natural ally and they are both ideologically conservative and concerned with maintaining the feudal state of the model, or feudal model of the state, with hope of decentralizing further against centralists' encroachment from left and right alike. <clears throat> not everyone in Zentrum. Subscribe to the idea of tagging along with a flock of weaker minor parties, however. Support these packs. as Zentrum defends federalism. We do not need them all to ground. Oh. The Gulf campaign will break down and they will lose up to five seats in the elections. <laughs> Collapse of that, uh, the Dat Bank. <clears throat> the Darmstadtler owned the National Bank. The Dat Bank. That's the first major casualty of the black money financial crash. The second largest bank in German Empire went deep into high risk loans prior to 1936, offering quick and easy loans to would be stock brokers and quick growing companies and now reaps the consequences. One of the companies which had been uh, severely indebted to Danat Bank was Norddeutsche Volkemerei und Akamgarnspinnerei, Nordvol, uh, wool and worsted processing plant in Delmenhorst. Much like hundreds of other companies, it announced its bankruptcy in the aftermath of its crash, having barely stayed afloat for the past several years and finally receiving a blow which made the plan insolvent. News of Nordvola's bankruptcy called a bank run on the Danat Bank, as many of the investors were fearful of the bank's future and rapidly pulled out their savings while they could still get their money's worth. As Danat Bank had failed to reach its primary coverage ratio for the past several years due to its speculative loaning practices, it could not be saved by the Reichs Bank in this moment of crisis, and was so forced to declare bankruptcy as well. The collapse of this old and respected bank has sent terrifying churns across the German banking system. Across the empire, investors and citizens alike are withdrawing their savings and retreating from the market. Banks are collapsing one after another, completely caught unprepared by the enormous crash of the financial system of the empire has been left and completely crippled. This is a nightmare. Oh, whoops, I wasn't supposed to click on that. Every 10 days, the effects of the economic crisis will be triggered by black money crash will escalate until it finally reaches the lowest point. Oh, great. USA accepts a uh, privates plan. The government of the United States has ag agreed upon a privates uh, plan, and first funds are already being sent to Washington to aid them in their economic recovery. Great. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, is there anything we can do? Fine. We'll click on all this stuff. Oh, look at all the stuff we can do in here. Look at that. Pax Germanica. That's cool. Reichsland Lösung. Oh. Huh. Well. But we can't do anything else next. German American Self Determination Associations. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. The colonies in Africa and Asia have fallen into hard times, struggling with colonial resistance and are being unprepared for outside threats. A surge of funding for the Economic and Defense Secretariats will leave them with more prepared for the years ahead. German Association, German American Self Defense Associations. Fears that civil war in the U.S. is inevitable. A last resort to make sure that the socialists are suppressed by, by military force. Although contacts in German-American organizations, we can foster the formation of loyalist self-defense militias, which will rise up for the anti-socialist forces in the civil war. New no, Avetsha, having earned the attention of the public with his accurate prediction of the Black Monday, stock market crash. Walter von Rottenau has not stopped there. Instead, in the aftermath of the Black Week and the onset of the greatest economic crisis Germany has faced since the Valkyrie, he has published an 11-page document for a full-scale reform of the economic system. This document has been proliferated across parties and uh, major newspapers. Those well read could tell that the document was a summary and somewhat moderate implementation of Rattenau's idea in his 1919 work, Neue Wirtschaft, The New Economy, and mirror the economic reforms he pursued during the Saal, Zulf, and Asberger governments as Secretary of the Economy. A firm believer in his economic program, Rattenau believes that Black Monday is a perfect opportunity for to pursue a full economic reform. The powers of the government and economic management must be greatly expanded, and wartime offices for the control of economic affairs and distribution of resources it must be restored as permanent institutions. Right and now, sees economic planning is uh, compatible with the free market. State intervention will be most able to harmonize the market, prevent waste of resources, and most importantly, combat the alienation of millions of factory workers employed in dull mundane jobs across Germany. Why well, does not propose it in its economic program yet? Right now. Dreams of a utopian class of society which will free workers from soulless labor. The mundanity of work cannot be resolved with socialist promises of wage raises or shorter hours. A complete restructuring is necessary. Though a panacea, Arbeitsausgleich, equalization of work, menial and mental workers will switch offices for factories and factories for offices. A few hours every day and would be able to find the calling somewhere in a vast uh, society of choice. Classes would dissolve, all work would be open according to the town, and mundanity of work would cease. But for now, economic planning will suffice. 
Interesting program. Hmm. We're so close with the roads here. A resignation of Reich's Chancellor Duxem. It had been anticipated ever since last year, late last year, but it was finally arrived thanks to the black money stock market crash. Not after long the day, that day in February, Reich's Chancellor Hubert von Duxem announced his resignation, offering little comments to the press or the members of the Reichstag. Though a competent diplomat, Duxem's composure and character of a vain, pompous aristocrat left him isolated in high politics. It never managed to shake off the veneer of being a royal appointment, less legitimate than partisan chancellors in the post March German Empire. His vice chancellor, Heinrich Brüning, refused to seek the Kaiser's appointment as the next Reich's chancellor. After the black money crisis, the office became a poison chalice. Seeing little initiative from the parties in the Reichstag, Wilhelm II appointed the current minister president of Prussia, Siegfried von Lohrodden, as a new Reich's chancellor. An elder civil servant with years of experience in the federal and Prussian governments alike, he currently heads a nonpartisan government of the center and right in Prussia, staffed with the right wing politicians and nonpartisan professionals. Those governments not planning to survive the April election has been allowed on his plate regardless. Rodin's preference is to assemble a nonpartisan emergency cabinet staffed by mainly by civil servants he relied upon in Prussia and promulgate emergency economic controls. This Prussian lockdown of the federal government was bound to go poorly with the state, however. Alternative approach would be to keep Brüning as vice chancellor and work with the Reichstag. Rockdorf could forge a grand coalition after the dramatic 1924 election, so perhaps Rodin, Rodin can repl replicate the CP. Appoint advisor Siegfried von Rodin. This put power, oh god. Perhaps Rodin can restore the Grand Coalition? <laughs> uh, I really don't know which one. European Brotherhood? Hmm. Social liberals will join. Card game? I love the weekly stability gain, because right now we are losing what? Yeah, March leads to April. Hmm. You know what? We're going to do this one. We're going to inflict as much pain on ourselves as we possibly can. Uh, Wilhelm II, he looks in pretty old. Mass layoffs. By late February, the Reichsbank and the state institutions finally began making the first actions towards stabilizing the free market fall markets. A bank holiday has been established and emergency bailouts for the Keystone banks that survived the initial crash have been set out, although all, through all the state's actions so far have been kept at a minimum, as the Reichstag remains deadlock and the election is approaching soon. By now, however, the damage has already been done, with the financial sector crippled and the international economic system trembling. Demand for German exports has collapsed, and companies across Germany are forced to declare either bankruptcy or insolvency or drastically cut costs. For almost all industries, it's been relieving workers, many of them, and the number of unemployed who have been cast out of the streets is now in the millions. The Bauer of reforms of 1925 established a system of unemployment insurance for the German workers, and so the meager pension allows unemployed to make men's meet somewhat, but that's a tax already struggling in finances of the empire greatly. And in numerous cases, the impact of the crash has been a lot more tragic. Stock market brokers who had lost everything in the past few weeks, struggling artisans who had refined their humble career for decades and saw their life ambitions crash these days. All have taken liking to ending their lives, and state police forces have been forced to patrol bridges more and more often. The government must intervene and do something. Crap. Operating of anti-Semitic violence, my favorite. The beginning of the economic crisis sparked by the black money market crash has given fuel to anti-Semitic agitation and even handful of outbreaks of violence across Germany and local legislatures. Robbing deputies, generally those belonging to the DVLP, has proposed taxation on Jewish businesses or boycotts of Jewish goods, while Jewish citizens in the cities had to cope with the suspicion and constant libel from right-wing newspapers. The Jewish population of Germany has historically been more integrated than their peers in the former Russian Empire, and I've gifted Germany with numerous health scientists, politicians, cultural figures, and war veterans. However, suspicion and mistreatment of them remains to this day. The black money market crash is difficult to comprehend for many German citizens, and tech is a propaganda espousing an international Jewish financier conspiracy that will make it difficult for the most entre to connect to those two events, as claiming that the German Jews were somehow responsible for the market crash. Aggressive DVLP agitation during the 1936 electoral campaign, which often played upon these anti Semitic fears, helped escalate them even further. The Jewish population is not completely helpless, however. Organizations throughout the Central Verein have consistently fought anti-Semitism in Germany through legal means, and they've already begun documenting and reporting instances of this outbreak while providing support for Jewish citizens who have been defamed or injured by anti-Semitic works. As needs to be curtailed in DKAEB on the verge of bankruptcy. Found in the early 20th century, the Deutsche Kaiserliche Abessin 
Eisenbahn, as a holding company that oversees the railway between Addis Ababa and Ethiopia and Djibouti. After a series of German backed expansions, the line is now used to transport ore from the Congo Basin to Djibouti. The current economic downturn means that the ore is not being bought at the time at the same rate as before, resulting in fewer transports for the group. Wow, this is weird. It's a very weird gray, dark uh, gray. The middle Africa, by Carl Ritter. As a result, the DKEB is struggling financially, so board members have approached the government in Dar es Salaam to share their, sell their shares to the government, German government. <clears throat> Something has to be done to prevent Ethiopia from slipping from our grasp. That's a weird thing, uh, like, the world like this after playing Kaiser, Kaiser Redux. Prop up the company. Sell the shares to Ethiopia. Prop them up. It's alright, let's not talk about it. Watch Coalition falls again. Oh crap. Our right, Council ruled down only enjoyed a majority in the Reichstag for a very short amount of time. Though he managed to marry Zentrum, LVP, and even the DKP and DVLP in Prussia, the Prussian home of House of Representatives, delegations of LVP and Zentrum are a lot more conservative than their national counterparts. Liberals resemble the old national liberals, while Prussian Zentrum, led by Franz von Papen, is a right reactionary. The liberals and Catholics in the Reichstag found little connections or consensus with the conservative right. After a few inter faction meetings on the fiscal reform and work creation programs, the LVP withdrew from the coalition and denied the Reichs Adler his majority, Reichs Chancellor. The DVLP enjoyed the situation in Reichstag and took advantage of it in their campaign, denouncing divided partisanship which paralyzes the German government while millions suffer, <clears throat> and demanding a government of actions, not words, ruling by strength, not committee. As the current government is yet indeed paralyzed, these causes resonate with many across the nation. At this point, will we even find a government come April? <coughs> Excuse me. Wu Pai Fu turns on us. Following the death of the League Marshal's son, Chuang Feng, we had hoped that our ally in Beijing, Wu Pai Fu, would remain loyal to our interests. However, it seems that he decided to turn on us to take a, publicity, a publicly anti concessionist stance. Well, his bolstered support for his unpopular regime, it means that he has demanded that the Peking Commission, our lobbying arm in Beijing, leave the city. Facing massive riots outside the gates of their offices, most members have fled to Xiang, Tianjin. Our ambassador sent all non essential staff to Tianjin as well. Then a skeleton group of counselor officials are closely watched by Wu's forces. Darn it. Puyi, huh? Van Mook, sending aid to the Nanjing warlords, huh? Yeah. The German Empire only considered pizza. The German East Asia no longer controls any of its scores of claims, with a population larger than 200,000. We're a creation plan on the DGA, G, D, A, oh my god, ADGB. The academic crisis has sparked discussions within various ideological circles and associations. The traditional consensus among German economists had failed, or at least, it was no longer trusted by the average worker and its politician. Witnessing millions being thrown to the streets and dozens of banks collapsing overnight. Parties, associations, and trade unions look towards the government for potential salvation. That state intervention may help drive up demand and reinvigorate the economy during the financial cycle. It has been contemplated during the interwar period, and those ideas have only gained more traction since Black Monday. The General of the German General Trade Union Federation, the Arbeit, has opened discussion on what they have named the active economic policy after the publication of a political economic program by the trade unionists Fritz Tarnow and Fritz Bad. This plan, titled the Abdano Bad Plan, after its creators, or Bain, posits the creation of a massive public works which can employ up to 1 million people across the empire, as well as tighter banking controls, which would allow an extensive inflationary policy. According to Tarnow and Bain, work creation of fiscal inflation will provide relief for the poor and drive up demand and solve the downfall. Though the ADGP is closely allied, allied with the SPD, uh, the party has actually distanced itself from the Tarnow and Bain Plan. Otto Bells and Rudolf uh, Helferding. I both criticize the ADGB for its direct intervention in politics, which consider should be delegated solely to the party, and for Tunnel and Bed's intentions to play doctor on the bedside of a capitalism. Underturn. The trade unions have been making waves across the press nonetheless, earning the surprising endorsement of the Prussian Minister of War, Kurt von Schleicher, who described work creation as the only way out of today's plights. Interesting. Second expedition to China, ten years ago. Our forces landed in China to suppress the socialist revolutionary Chiang Kai-shek, but his party, the KMT, has risen in again thanks to the collapse of the League of Eight Provinces. Um, we, while we cannot afford a direct intervention again, we need to aid our allies in China to prevent the rise of a new socialist juggernaut. Yeah, we don't hate socialism here. So we're going to have a little bit of socialism. Just a tiny bit. Ah, uh, the German agrarian crisis. The German agrarian agricultural sector, struggling for years up to this point, has suffered greatly from the economic uh, crisis peaked by the Black Monday market crash. 
As a later step in the persistent decline of German agriculture ever since the late 19th century, the culmination of many years of inefficient and outdated methods, unfortunate global market developments, and stalling, poorly for future-oriented agrarian policies. Compared to its Western competitors, such as Britain or the United States, German agriculture has consistently lagged behind in efficiency. 25% of all arable land across the empire is held by 0.2% of the landowners, most of which are operating in East Albia. But since the late 20s, small and mid-sized farmers all across the nation have started to feel the effects of the assuming efficiency crisis as well. Steady price erosion for agricultural goods due to cheaper competition from a broader shriveling purchasing power slowly led many farmers into the never-ending downward spiral of growing indebtedness. What could possibly be initiated initially be a battle via the reintroduction of the protective tariffs and imperial quotas, import quotas? Undoubtedly, a controversial policy instrument within Middle Europe is that, at the end of the day, only postpone the inevitable. With the collapse of the German banking sector, looming crisis will soon aggravate many estates and enterprises which have relied on loans to stay afloat or bound to default in these near the near future, and the collapsing demand for agricultural goods could be the final nail in the coffin. This substantial crisis are beginning to fuel a DKP electoral campaign and place a question of a drastically different agricultural policy on the agenda. What many have seemed to have forgotten interesting, though, is that the conservatives are part partly responsible for themselves for this dilemma via the candidates in the state secretariat of agriculture, Martin Schiel, and his, uh, his controversial agricultural policies during the last decade. For now, his political fate is on the knife's edge. The great Yoka estates are a thing of the past. Crap. Cap, cap. Oh, soft attack, I like that. Voltaire? Artillery. Rhine metal, yes. <clears throat> Fantastic desires, huh? Huh. Well, whatever. Brute heavy hole. I'm sorry I didn't do this earlier. Oh, just a lot of reading. What do you expect? It's because of Reich. That's fine, whatever. The planes, basic small planes, high fighters. Yeah. Basic plus air support. Junkers. Uh, medium air players, I don't really, I don't really like those. Oh, so handsome. So I'll do the China one next. City Council elections in Berlin. The term of incumbent mayor of Berlin, Heinrich Somm, is set to expire, and the new election is thus slated to be held by the Berlin City Council. A uh, technocratic independent, Somm served as the mayor of several other cities in the past before. Moving to Berlin is generally supported by the local liberal and conservative deputies. The political upheaval after Black Money gives an opportunity for the Berlin Social Democrats to win elections to the city council and appoint one of their own. Otto Strovinsky, Otto Strovsky, current mayor of the Proletzer Berg borough of Berlin. Ostrowski has seen as a member of the left-wing faction of the SPD and a victory for him would signal a significant change in Berlin politics. It would also be a bellwether for the nation's turn to the left to empower social democratic activity in the other cities. Because of this, LVP and DKP have joined forces in Berlin, seeking to keep some in power and return a victory for the right and center. Once the election comes to pass, the result was, is... Was an election? Otto? Oh boy, you never know what's going to happen. Except we do finish our drinks. A democratic Union Forum. The reorganization is taking place across the German parties. As the Social Democratic SPD and the Liberal LVP have announced an official agreement on cooperation in the 1936 election, uh, Reichstag elections. This agreement made between the Hermann Müller and Erkoch. The respective party chairman entails joining candidates in key constituencies and common policies of the two parties will push to relieve the effects of the black money crisis in the next Reichstag. These policies include banking reform, public works, and other employment measures. In addition, both parties have professed their loyalty to the achievements of the March reforms of the Constitution and their dedication to defending them from the encroaching conservatives, and to name a Democratic Union. Before and during the Valkyrie, the Progressive People's Party was a close ally of the SPD and persistently ended up in the shadow when the unification of the liberal parties into the LVP was seen as a way to how to escape this, this shadow and allow German liberalism to become a powerful force in its own right. The LVP's decision to restore the alliance with the SPD thus shows that ultimately they were unable to avoid their fate as a secondary power. Together, therefore, a democratic German empire. An ecumenism. Since have seen better days. Since the end of the Valkyrie, the parties helped to form all ten cabinets, whether they left, right, or center. The strategy left us sorely unprepared for these times of polarization as it now struggles to keep its voters away from the SPD, DVLP, and other agrarian parties. 
Under these conditions, the party's ruling cadre have begun to waver. Zentrum's current chairman, Pedro von Gurad, has served for the last five years with an eye on managing the party's various factions, but he has indicated that should Zentrum be pushed from power in the coming elections, he will retire from his position. The news has put the entire party on the maneuvers. The first blow has come for the right flank. Heinrich Held, the Bavarian Minister President, has published an article in the Kundlische Volkszeitung on the party's future, in which he has called not only for a stronger commitment to regional and conservative issues, but for the party to reach out to a Protestant voters willing to defend both. And throw in the glove forth. Uh, Held visitors revisits one of the party's most contentious debates. Over time, many writers and trade unions have entered the, the idea of taking Zentrum out of the tower, transforming it from the purely Catholic party to an all-Christian people's party in their eyes. Such a party could unite the middle class, working class, and rural interests and provide a bulwark against the growing left. Held's remarks on Christian unity have been echoed by uh, leading trade unionist Adam Stegevald, who many be believe to be the frontrunner to succeed von Gerard. The party's progressive uh, watch these days. Oh, the party's progressives watch these developments with concern. In recent years, the left flank has championed the Catholic nature of Zentrum out of the fear that Protestant votes would draw the party to the right. And indeed, both Held and Stegevald have suggested overtures to the DKP and even more rightward parties. The strongest rebuttal to Held's articles come from the leading. Now, Baden progressive Joseph Veth, who argues that such adventures risk the party's position in the center and the trust of the Catholic electorate at a critical time, whether Veth's words will be heeded is an open question. It's not the time to be exposing yourself to such risk. Well, he has a point. Uh, the party must reach out to the towers to, to survive. Romania nationalizes oil fields after a complete oil crash. Uh, the crash, complete crash of the oil lands, leasehold company managing the Polesti oil fields, Condoro's government proceeded to nationalize the assets of the bankrupt corporations. Yet another case of Romania breaking the Bucharest Treaty. There's still a lot of we can do to stop them. Neither does the public care much about the issue. If the only thing they can survive without Middle Europa, this will be it. <clears throat> How terrible. The Kenyatta Affair. For a rather unique case, it's been sluggishly passed through our loyal legal system for years. Now, as reached the highest court in the German state, anti colonial activist Jomo Kenyatta has brought forth a class action lawsuit against the former Middle African administration for its conduct during the 1925 pacification of Kenya. The case has become something of a political embarrassment as some of the plaintiffs are British settlers and cannot be easily dismissed. They claim that the Schutztruppe have harmed them through the policies of illegal land seizures and even abductions and torture, all done with the knowledge of the Middle African administration and a little legal basis. While the main parties involved are no longer part of our administration, commentators have noted that an award by the court could potentially set a precedent as to what the permissible extent of rule bending of our colonial administration is. So we have nothing to fear. And nothing else we can do. Buying time with spies. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. Also, uh, well, Miller to mission to Constantinople. Our Valkyrie Galas in the Middle East, the Ottoman Empire, has not yet fully abandoned their relationship with Berlin in spite of some of the issues between our states in the past. And in addition, they are only forces which can maintain a stable German aligned Middle East. There's no reason not to back them and support them. Economic freefall ceases. Having been in a freefall for the past few months, our the economic crisis has finally reached a modicum of stability. Or at least it doesn't have much elsewhere to, to more to fall. The least stable companies and bank, banks have gone under, and now the more durable ones compete in a shrunken, silent environment. Investor trust is at an all time low, so new investments are non existent and production stagnates. And of course, millions of workers who had stable jobs last year now on the streets, desperate for work, but companies shaken by the financial collapse are very hesitant to expand and employ more workers again. The initial surprise and shock of the German government has subsided, and then our secretaries and ministers may begin developing solutions. The amount of work is enormous, and the same must somehow recover the economy of the Empire back to its old heights. The on challenges which may require wildly different financial strategies each. The bureaucrats and officials thus eagerly await the results of the April election. Perhaps the next government will have the political capital needed for this necessary action, which will restore the miracle of the twenty golden twenties. The luck money crisis card game will be initiated. You must win at least ten rounds of the game and improve economic health to a negative one to put an end to the crisis. Oh god, we're playing games here. It's time to time to duel. Wow, God, it's going back to my childhood, isn't it? Well, I'm gonna save real quick first before I do anything else. The army's ready to go. We have 16 naval XP. That's it. Not good enough. All right. So, uh, the Black Monday trading card game is a turn-based event in which we, you must play against a crisis and defeat it in a match of wits and strategy. Every 30 days, you'll draw a hand from your card of decks, including three types: relief, recovery, and reform. These cards can boost one another, draw more cards, and give you advantages, or simply deal investment and stability score. Your tech and defense. At the end of the round, you must surpass the crisis stagnation and economic decline, also being aware of the mounting toll the stakes on your deck. Current crisis, liquidity crisis, money creation cards will be more effective. 
An ongoing crisis changes every round of Black Monday. Each type has different strengths and weaknesses against co relief card types and comes with economic decline and stagnation scores. Current effects of current economic health are god awful. Current debt 105% of GDP. Tell that to America. If it reaches 200%, we'll end a debt default. We'll lose Black Monday card game out and our economy will collapse. Is there another hidden path or a uh, fail safe state for that path? Calling different types of cards. And we have following cards in our deck. God, I, I gotta go play Yu Gi Oh! again sometime. I'm just playing Pokemon recently. So, right now, money creation cards will be more effective. End of turn. Crisis will win this game. Well, let's see. Counselor on the radio. A recovery card. Unless a reforming card has been played this turn, the card has no effect. Cooperation with business. A recovery card. Plus, the cards will be drawn from the deck. Add more to the debt. RAFAUA Employment Program. Relief slash work creation card type. 1500 added to stability core, 750 added to investment st uh, score, plus 1% to debt. Capital controls. Relief card, a capital control type card. Interesting. Relief card, money creation card. It's 50% more effective because it is a money creation card type played during a liquidity crisis. Um, I don't mind adding slightly more to the deck to get two more cards, maybe? A verdict. Years of legal battle come to an end earlier today when the litigation of Jomo Kenyatta ended at the highest court of Germany. Well, the Kiku Yu lawyer has skillfully defended his points, the defense was represented by renowned political theorist Carl Schmidt. The jurist produced a novel defense that established a new legal precedent. The Schutztruppe command has, command has allegedly acted in the interest of the state by taking the necessary steps to ensure the integrity of our empire in the state of exception. exception. Fine details of Schmidt's case were largely based on his essay of political theology, which gave birth to the phrase, Sovereign is, is he who decides on the exception. Whether Schmidt intends this or not, the phrase has become a catchphrase for the supporters of a more hardline approach to colonial governance. What is this nonsense? All relief cards will deal 20% uh, more stability. Add price monitoring. Interesting. So we have to get above 2,500 each. 2,000. If we do this one, stability will definitely get over that, but 750 won't be enough for this. Relief card. Recovery. Deals 200, except for every... Ooh, let's add 1,400, 1,400. Ooh, I like this one. So that'll be good, right? Quite a bit more debt, but what else do you expect? Hey, we actually got some research done. Look at that. This is cool. I like this. Mm -hmm. So, do we need like? Can we like overextend our like, uh, like economic decline and stagnation? Like, it boosts it up a whole bunch, or do should we wait? Push it higher eventually. Um, not sure. No majority in the 1936 election. As predicted by quite a few during the campaign, no majority been found in the Reichstag after the elections of 1936. A majority is impossible without the participation of either the SPD or the DVLT, two parties on different side ends of the political spectrum, either of which would need time to dismantle the old consensus and craft a new coalition in the legislature, however. <clears throat> There's no time for the Reichstag to bicker among themselves until they finally form a government. With each passing day, the economic situation grows worse and the faith of the people falters further. When the parliamentarians cannot lead, the duty to make a decision falls to the Kaiser to build on the second. Even after the March Constitution, his rule on the formation of governments remains definite, and whenever there is no obvious majority in the Reichstag, he has seen fit to appoint compromised choices like Brockdorf or loyal to the court like Drexin. Uh Through Crown Prince Wilhelm, the Kaiser was recommended an interesting choice, Kurt von Schleicher, the current Minister of War in Prussia. Ever since Leo von Caprivi's resignation in 1894, Wilhelm II has been reluctant to appoint military candidates to the office of parliamentarians would hardly wish to see a uniformed man command the empire, either to bring back memories of the Hindenburg and Ludendorff's uh, plotting during the Valkyrie. However, Schleicher has offered several valuable qualities as well. During the past two decades, he has nurtured the image of a moderate worker who works well with the Reichstag, has ties and connections across the political spectrum, and has a noted support of the trade union such as the ADGP, earning the moniker of the Red General. At a time when the national unity is necessary, 
All these qualities are crucial, finally. He was a close friend of Kronprinz Wilhelm, was a major influence on his age father and eventually got him to appoint their new Reichskanzler. Welcome, Reichskanzler Schleicher. The move March leads to April, thank God. Get more political power. Kurt von Schlager has been appointed Reichskanzler, however, it seems unlikely that he can stay for very long. Elections have been held in the German Empire after two years of failed government and a stock market crash, uh, which resulted in a worldwide economic collapse. The Empire of Permanent Opposition Parties, the SPD and the DVLP, gained a large enough share of the vote that another moderate liberal Catholic cabinet is no longer possible. In light of the difficult situation, Kurt von Schlager has been appointed as the unifying figure. Schlager. As a general of the Hale and the Prussian Minister of War, who accounted um, accumulated an impressive influence in the past two years, Pragmatic of the Corps expresses his wish to work with all parties in the Reichstag to combat the crisis, but he did not shy away from the true goal of stronger, more centralized, militarized Europe, as he should. The Arbeitsschlag, constructed no confidence principle. Not a high castle, huh? Matters of national security, in his first speech before the Reichstag, uh, Reichskanzler Schleicher announced that the first and biggest priority of his government will be contain the economic crisis caused by the Black Monday stock market crash. To this end, he spoke out against orthodox economists and their agendas by stating that the most crucial step to take is a war against unemployment. Stability in the financial markets, management of imperial debt, they are all important, but they cannot be more important than the millions of yearning masses thrown out, out of their jobs during the course of the past few months. However, that is not the controversial event of the day. Oh wait, no. Job creation and war on unemployment. Those are the slogans of the hour, popular with the people who demanded quick solutions to their personal economic issues. Already, the right new Reichs Council has been in contact with like-minded officials such as Fritz Tarnow and Fritz Bad, who have been developing an employment-based recovery plan with the aid of the ADGB Trade Union Confederation, or potentially even the famous Walter von Rathenau, who has developed a complex scheme for full reform of the German economy along state control lines during the Valkyrie. However, that was not the controversial event of the day. Of the Reichs Councillors, Backing the first law of the cabinet was proposed in the same session, amending the procedure for votes of no confidence established by the March reforms, which were described vaguely in the Constitution itself, and thus declared in ordinary Reichstag bills, citing the necessity for cabinet stability under the fractured nature of the current Reichstag. Schleicher pushed for a system of constructive no confidence vote. A vote, a no confidence vote on the government may only be voted for and passed if a replacement candidate for the Reichs Chancellor is proposed by the same people. If the, this proposed replacement candidate is as chosen by to the Kaiser, though he still has pow full power to remain and choose who he wants. This has relayed any no confidence vote towards Schleicher just by making sure that the SPD and the DVLP cannot band together and remove whoever they wish, though it does not mean that they have given up just yet. The parliamentary parties now just need to build a critical mass in the Reichstag to push through their choice. It's rather unorthodox. The complete De Arbeitsschlacht and constructive no confidence principle. The battle over the chancellorship of Kirk von Schleicher begins. <coughs> Before the factory nature of the incumbent Reichstag sparks a flurry of no confidence votes, we must establish a principle which any no confidence vote must also propose an alternative candidate for the Reichskanzler seat. That way, we won't expose experience a situation that Germany is left headless at a crucial moment. The Arbeitsschlag. The first item of Virginia must be the needs of the people. Millions are on the streets and they are desperate for salvation. If the government does not create jobs for them, they will seek alternative, extreme solutions, like I do. The employers have failed them, struggling with debt or waiting for better days. Thus, the state must do the heavy lifting and create jobs themselves. Zhu Zhi Xiao Yan accepts. Xi Yuan accepted the terms of a military mission and will allow them to settle in Nanjing clique. Also bringing much needed experience about the state of the modern war to Germany and further our interest in China as well. Great. Force Brothers Uprising. Oh no. The paralysis of the central government in Riga and the economic crash has given Latvian, Estonian, partisans and the United Baltic Duchy an opportunity to rebel against the Duchy. They then suffer the brunt of the developing rebellion and the land administrators there report that they cannot control the countryside. As the law enforcement agencies have been overrun by ad hoc partisans, organizations and underground resistance groups. Supported by local farmers and defectors from the Dutch's army, these so-called Forest Brothers are wrecking havoc and seeking to completely overthrow German rule in the Baltics. Riga has requested we send a detachment of temporary military police to form a uh, force to the Dutch to help them in their fight against the Baltic separatists. Should the Dutch collapse, it would be disastrous not only for the German pride and standing in Europe, but also our defensive plans against Russia. Nothing is too costly. At least you'll ensure the Dutch survives. Our aid will be of use, but not guarantee the Dutch survives. You shall have our support. The Man of the High Castle. Prozentrum to enforce party discipline. If two Zentrums, three factions are aligned with Demokratische Union or Koalition Schwarz Weiss Rot, all Zentrum will become aligned with that faction. Otherwise, all become unaligned. Quer. Quer Verbindung. Escalate a Rural Kampf Suppression. Revive the Rat Now Plan. Neue Wirtschaft. 
A copy of the card from all right now plan will be added to the deck. Recovery. Draw a number of cards from the deck equal to the number of national foes that completed the, the right now plan branch. New operations war economics. Copy of the card economic planning authorities. Every time a car, uh, work card creation work creation type card is played, we get more money for that card. Streamline goods production. Um, pursue Bin and Wirtschaft. Oh god, no debt cost. Score debt by relief cards increased by 25% this turn. Equality of opportunity. Traft the the Tarnal Bad Plan. Social economics. Huh. Mass public works. Establish price controls. Massive public works. <laughs> Expense state provided credit from the Stadtliche Bankenaufsicht. Guarantee leading roles of trade unions. Put up a power game. Recovery card. Half of all current accrued investments is dealt with stability score. Negotiating debt restructuring. Freiwinger Arbeitsdienst. Infrastructure. Injecting capital in the economy with construction plans will aid in the recovery of the economic crisis. Uh, oh, God. Ah, oh, that's pretty good. Salz, uh, Salz, Greta, Stahlwerk. Vitalize heavy industry. Oh, good research slot. Additional plus card will be drawn at the beginning of every turn, huh? Ooh, minus negative 4%. State monopoly on nitrate and tobacco. Inflation weaponry. How mild shock. No longer be accessible as a political advisor. Establish federal tax income. A stable coalition has been found that the government can bypass the legislature, preventing the block blocking in the Reichstag. Well, I kind of I like the Latinel plan, but just for funsies, this sounds like the one we should try. I want to negotiate debt restructuring first. State investments in economic recovery programs have inevitably come with a cost that someone needs to, someone needs to pay, which so far has been able to cover with short and long-term debts. This cannot last forever. We need to start negotiating with domestic and international lenders to, pay, to delay payments and restructure debt to prevent a financial crash. Freiwillige Arbeitsdienst. The first priority of the new government is to make sure that few German citizens starve on the streets as possible. We shall establish a voluntary labor service which will accept and feed the unemployed. Employ them in menial, work intensive labor across the empire, improve infrastructure while giving your unemployed a helping hand. So, what do we got here? Oh god. So, what do we have here? 149. Democratic Union holds at 159 out of 223. Coalition of Schwarz Weiss holds at 66. Target LVP. Triggers a protective faction. What is a protective faction? Oh my god. <clears throat> Schlecker's vision for his own Germany needs to remain to see it through. In this battle for the Reichstag, both parliamentary coalitions will attempt to convert one of the few possible options every turn 30 days, while the players are able to flag certain factions every turn to make sure they are immune to being converted. If a coalition reaches the majority, they'll initiate a vote of confidence and seize power. As Schleicher, you must stay in power as long as possible and have access to the Focus Street branch to aid you in doing so. Flag per turn. If not completed within 30 days, with the expiration of this mission, one of the following actions will be chosen at random. LDP was successfully targeted. Left. Right. Maybe minority block? Maybe, I guess. We try it. Black money turn completed. The most recent turn of the black money card game has been completed and new has begun. New cards available. Our targets for investment and somebody have been adjusted. Nightmare continues. Oh god, it's even way more. Well, that's not good. All relief cards will deal 20% more stability. Huh.
Oh, we have 21 days for this. Well, I guess we have no relief cards. Well, shnikes. There's a relief card, there you go. Just ability. It's a labor crisis, so recreation cards will be more effective. A oh, recovery card. Rice make analysis, interesting. Good, good. Way overkill, huh? <laughs> We need more investment. I guess we'll go with that for now, you know? I do want to draft the plan Tarnal Bod. First Tarnal and first Bod are trade union leaders who initiated discussion on a social economic reform project not long after the Black Monday market crash. A public endorsed Schlacker's appointment with the hopes that he will listen to the concerns. The project involves vast state intervention to curtail the banking sector and create public works. Choosing the Vice Chancellor, officially known as a, a General Deputy to the Rex Chancellor. The Vice Chancellor may be appointed at the request of the Rex Chancellor. He is able to fulfill the duties of the Rex Chancellor and countersign imperial orders and decrees in the Rex Chancellor's stead and generally holds considerable influence in the collegial federal government. Traditionally, the Vice Chancellor also serves as Secretary of the Interior, although this is not an ironclad rule. During coalition governments in the Empire, the Vice Chancellor is generally given the most important coalition partner of the Rex Chancellor. For Schleicher, it's an issue. As he's an outsider of the Reichstag and seeks to work beyond partisan barriers, but is also given an opportunity. By tactically appointing a delegate of bothersome ideological wing, he can satiate them for a while, and then spend the time furthering his own agenda. An independent, nonpartisan, and generally conservative official, such as Tylo von Bimelski, would be seen as an act of trust by the conservatives in the Reichstag. On the other hand, a member of the right wing of the SPD, such as August Winning, will assure that Schlacker's government reinforces its pretense as a red general's government, and grants some assurances to the SPD. Alternatively, it's possible to simply just leave the office of Vice-Chancellor vacant to forego opportunities for building cross-connection, but it will consolidate even more power in the hands of the Rex chancellor What will the Schlecker's direction be? Taking this focus, will freeze coalition Schwarz or Rex vault from any actions of the Reichstag this turn. Also, draw your regime closer to the right, and will affect the direction of your regime as well as the perception among the people. August Vinning, a maverick, but tolerable to the SPD. We do not need a second command. Centralizing step, affect the direction of your regime as well as perception among the people. I want to go hard left. I don't know, just because I want to go with that direction. Oh, cool. Um, well, crap. It is what it is. We're still learning here. I don't know what's going to go on. Look up balance power right now. But hey, I think I'll end it there. If you enjoyed the first episode of us playing as the German Empire, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you what else we can do to screw up Germany. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.